We got a load. Yeah. We're gonna, loaded up. We got a load this, in our bird. This will be the second time I've hauled these. Yeah. Yeah. You done hauled these once, didn't you? <laughs> At least that one. That yeah. one looks familiar. But it'll be my first time. Okay. It looks so, good. Yep. We're still beeping, so we got yep. a few minutes. We. Uh, what do you think we're grossing? The yellow jacket nest, but totally legal 100 percent legal whatever that is so i'm gonna go back over here with the yellow jackets <clears throat> we'll get the convertibles on the way home yeah. all right to the mill we go i thought we were going to take our logs to oh school. i did another one i messed up trying to show up and i hit my damn thing with bob <laughs> said we'll see you hurry, hurry back yeah. she said she'll have dinner waiting yeah. <laughs> we moved enough logs we might get steak tonight oh my <laughs> kentucky round steak <laughs> well phil asked me what what did he owe me i said uh i don't know i should have said dinner <laughs> yeah. or, or why not go hungry tonight yeah. probably been maybe 10. Yeah, the 10 of yeah. The 10 hardest ones, the rest of them will be pretty much Highway, downhill. highway that now. That was all the way up, you know, now it's down. Now we're going road. down. Yeah. One more time. Mr. Professional. Where's your straps, Wade? Where's your straps? <laughs> straps. <laughs> I get that argument all the time. I hate straps. Turns out times were funny. But your salary. <laughs> Fix that tomorrow.
need any help. He always figures it out. Beautiful. And Jace is picking up some boards he had cut out. <laughs> This ain't about longer weight, it's about big deal 18. He did, I had to do that for him. Yeah. <laughs> no, in all seriousness, he got that one. He's the, he's good, man. This old boy picks up, he's like dirt perfect. He picks up on stuff really good, really quick. So you gotta pile people that's not used to okay. So these I unloaded these. The ones that are nice lay nice and straight. They mine. Are. Well what about that one? You that's where you ended up at. Oh. Well I just wanted to stop or like a bookmark. So I know where to know where, to, you started know where I started. Right. All right. Yeah. So we got all these. Gum. Yep. Gum. No, it's poplar. No, poplar. Poplar, poplar, poplar. Yep. And more. Poplar, poplar, poplar. What about this one? <clears throat> uh that would be a uh, red oak. Okay. Yep. That, that's the top out of a red mm -hmm. oak. Now these these species here, so everybody knows, it's not familiar. This this is furniture, trim, flooring. This is stuff you look at in your house. It's not your structure. Cabinets and stuff are made yeah, normally out of poplar. Yeah, this is the stuff you and, see. And your ash. Yep. See, I'm just that's a new one for me because we yep. don't have that back home. And but back home, if you get you get into a track with those, you're on to something right there. And uh, you've proved me. Uh, you got your. Mm -hmm grandpa pile over there yeah the big boys the big boys so what that's, all we got that's soft maple, maple. That's, yeah that's uh that's a uh, silver maple so see, see the worm tracks in it yeah we we'll call right. that ambrosia yeah that's ambrosia maple okay yep all right so let's just take the the 10 second to 10 okay. 10 cent tour all right there's, so we uh, lay what do we lay all the logs out here for okay now my wife she takes them up and she puts mm. them in the computer system so we know what we got coming in. After we saw, we go to sell. We know what we got when we sold. We know so what we got in between. When she walks through here, she's measuring. Measuring everything and inventorying it in species. Both measure. ends to come up with. No, the small end. She just measures the small yep. end. Small end gets in, entered in inventory. Mm -hmm. So all them logs in the stacks, after they're took up and they're sorted and put in the stacks, all them logs in them stacks are in a computer system. So we know. Now they're not they're not numbered. Now how does that work when you take them out and you're cutting? How do you keep track of inventory? You're putting it into inventory. How are you taking it out of inventory? Rotate. Okay. So you run like this runs all in a pile and they run it all out. Oh, okay. Gotcha. It's, it's not, it's not. You have separate piles. So like if we're going to saw this week, we're going to saw this pile. Within so, reason. Okay. It's, it's not perfect. But when you finally run out of a species, mm -hmm. totally bare bones, scrape the bottom of the barrel, that's all gathered in your computer system and you know what gotcha. you got. Gotcha. What is it? What we got back here? White oak. No, that's all maple. 
Oh, that's, see, that's okay. Different. That's an older round of soft yeah, maple. Yeah, I see it, it looks there. Fresh around the soft yeah. maple and hard maple down there in the bottom, and this is all soft maple. This old. Gotcha. So all our poplar, poplar. What we got over there? Red oak. White oak and the two little ricks. That's red oak right there, ain't it? In yeah, the big pile. And the two large yeah. ricks is red oak. Yeah. And then ash. A lot of ash. Yeah. This is the ash hole. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I thought it was all dead. <laughs> well, it's, it's it's getting ate up by the bug. So you're getting it before it get got. Yeah, get it while the getting's good. <laughs> and then on the back end, <clears throat> you know, you, you look at things like like when you put something in a box, you put the bigger stuff in the box first. Yep. When you get ready to do something, you do your higher priorities first. Well, down there closer to the mill is where the money logs go. <clears throat> yeah. In the back here, it's all pallet wood, uh, for the most <clears throat> part. And that sassafras up there. Uh, except for the the walnut and cherry gets back there because we keep that in the shades keep okay it cool so walnut and cherry in the back cottonwood uh, sassafras beech sycamore. sycamore gum and others and an older beech see sir you talking about running them through so there's old beech there's older beech and there's lesser older beech gotcha so when I mean, you run that you pretty much have it, the same exact trees we have yeah back home just in different and how many four foot would you say you have on the yard right now board feet or, 800 or, eight, it's close to eight hundred thousand. and what are you shooting maybe for? maybe maybe we're shooting for for us for our company we're shooting for probably 1.5 million would be nice but we're shooting for like 1.8 to get you through the winter yeah well this is what we want to do the more the merrier the more we got in here the merrier this is when you're <clears throat> when it's dry in the fall is when and, and then it saps down so you can store logs because the sap's not up so now it's getting cool and you can put them out here and they're it's not going to stay cool, and go bad in, and in the economical loggings now it takes a lot less diesel fuel to get them in now because yeah. of the uh soil gotcha dirt. well let's go look at uh, where they go from here it appears the logs start right here yeah all right so <laughs> the wood comes in if you pick a species you're going to saw so this is poplar we're sawing poplar the the bottom 20 percent of the tree has 80 percent of the value the outside of the tree has more of the value and the closer you get the heart and the closer you get to the canopy mm -hmm. the lower the grade see so, not to cut you off but i always thought the deeper you got in the log the better it was because it was protected i guess but it's actually the the best this this is uh your, Limb, your limbs where your limbs grow that's a defect yeah that's so as know. the tree gets more mature the branches yep. go away and the better woods on the outside and we're after clear face cuttings in here and clear face cuttings are not permitted to have rot pith shake or wane in the middle the middle of your limbs is all pith and rot so, so you can't you can't have the that's what's not admitted in a clear face cutting and that's gotcha. what we're cutting these logs up for first machine is a debarker and it rolls the log around these bull rolls that spins the log uh and then this head comes across it and eats the bark off of it when it gets done this is what you ended up with mostly debarked mostly and debarked. that's getting this all is... your obviously the bark off of it and anything that's going to damage the saw blade it's what, as far you, as like dirt it's what the goal is but our head's real aggressive i'm not i'm kind of odd with that but uh you're trying to stay out of this cambium layer. You see here where we dug in? Yep. But this is the edge of the log, the fat part of the log, it don't matter because your face will be set from this small end of the yeah, log. Yeah, that's gonna get thrown that's away. That's gonna end the chipper anyways. But you gotta watch it. So you're trying to take the knots and stuff out, you see where the head ate that yeah. knot off? Yeah, eat that down. But, but this, here's your money wood you're biting into. Gotcha. After the debarker comes down the green chain. Is that what you call them? The log or deck, just yeah. Log deck. Log deck. And it goes through the carriage. This is the head saw. The head saw is the first saw you go to. And what the job of the head saw is, is to take a round log and make a square piece out of it. So when you start, since your money's on the outside of the wood, you want to make the smallest opening face possible. So your minimum size cutting face is six inches. So we're trying to make a six inch by eight foot long minimum cutting face on grade and on lower grade you can drop down to four inches by whatever six foot if you had to or whatever gotcha but your minimum cutting face your minimum size opening face this carriage is a lineal positioner carriage ran by a uh, scanner there's a scanner with uh 32 lasers and uh 12 uh cameras 
12 cameras and 32 lasers and it and it senses where the log's at and it'll position your log for you really make sure it's right it's set out and positioned and ready to go through the saw and operator sits right there and controls the operator everything sits in there and controls it and this carriage is lent, it's got rods in it so the computer knows where each one of these head blocks are okay well the knees excuse me the knees of the carriage the knees is what sets it out the head blocks is what it sets on and this is shotgun feed works which is two big pistons this 40 foot long and rams the carriage back and forth so now is he squaring it up to get it down to a certain size the the, the minimum size that the resaw will take is 18 inches so he's got to drop he's got every big lock he's got to get it down to at least 18 by 18. yeah and he's got to drop his x and y dimensions below 18 inches and then he can spit it off so he's cutting lumber or if i guess planks to. no more lumber than he has to he's cutting the planks that you know get it down so it'll fit through the resaw all done right here and then it goes right and 80 percent of your logs go straight over the resaw if you hit four sides okay the reason that's important is the head saw takes a, a, a about a five sixteenths to three eighths curve so you don't want to saw any more you're, than you you're have losing to. a lot of product your curve's over there your curve savings is on your resaw that's a band what's the with your double saw blades what's the largest diameter log you can run through this we saw way bigger than you're supposed to. I mean, we I, can probably I, saw 62. We can I, get a 62. Some of those, skin. that one up there, well, you have to trim that yeah, one down. All them. Yeah, the one with the, the, the stains there in it. Yeah, we'll have to trim the spurs. <laughs> but now, here's one he's had to saw quite a bit on to but, get square, so but, it has no wane left on it. So that's what an 18 by 18 inch log looks yeah, like. Relative. Timber, timber. Yeah, so here's over here, here's what they typically are. See how the wane's yep. on? Yep. So you're not wanting to cut any more with the head saw than you have to to get it over here. Yeah, and these were over. That face is so fat. These were oversized logs, which yeah. is what he had to cut down to. Yes. But this should only have a six inch opening, and I don't know why. This piece. Now, when you say six inch opening, what are you talking about? The the flat part of this. Oh, yeah. it's already been sawed once, dummy. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> this is the resaw are these considered cants now yeah these are cants so they become from logs to cants and now cants goes through this merry it's a re resaw and it's got a return row case so the idea here is you can pull them on and you can bam 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 and just keep logs going through and these cants will go through the saw at anywhere from 180 to 240 feet a minute wow so they're banging through there there's a lot of wood coming off and all this is operated right here and this is the guy that's operating it which I can operate this, but I'm not good at it. <laughs> but uh, he's sitting in here like this. And he's got all these buttons and all this, and you use them all. And here's his, his press rolls, his sets, and his uh, all his powers. And then he's got foot pedals. And he's looking at cameras yep. that are showing stuff he can't see. And he's got cameras to see. see, yeah. You know, here's your lumber room, and you're, you're trying to communicate with these guys. You're trying to keep these guys fed properly. Okay. And then down here, there's a big blind spot there. So this is like looking through the mirror so you mm -hmm. can see behind the blind spot. So it keeps everybody safe. And then here's your scrap belts to make sure they're still not gotcha. stopped up and running. So, and then and then you keep putting it, and it's just like anything in life. You're, you're, you're going for your money first. So priority, you're sawing accordance to priority. So you want to box a heart in the center of your camp best you can. Throw your money wood out towards the fence all the time. So the most important money wood goes this way all the time through that saw and then these these turns i ain't gonna wear but these turns will pick up and they'll spin and they'll rotate the cant whichever mm -hmm. way now the guy that's normally doing the flipping is down there they call that the grading station and he's turning it the way he's trying to do is sort out pallet wood which some of that over there is pallet wood he's trying to sort out the pallet wood and keep him away from the grade and then it, and as he grade the cant down it'll finally turn the pallet wood and then kick it off when it gets bad you keep flipping this that guy keeps flipping to what he picking the best face to go against this fence over here mm -hmm. and uh when you're sawing thick foot thick thick uh like six quarter and eight quarter thick pieces of wood for high dollar type of stuff he's marking it to tell the guy hey i looked it over the face is clean like that's perfect six eight quarter material that's all perfect six eight quarter material all that you're looking at so they can widen it out and bam 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 you're getting your big expensive pieces that people use for like fancy table tops and fancy structural furniture and stuff like yeah. that that you're using to make a statement or beams in a house or whatever so and then when you get down to where the grade starts dropping which you can see in that last cant there 
then they're going to narrow down they're going to get narrowed down to four quarter and then they're going to get all the way down to where it turns to nothing but pallet stock and we'll get to that later okay and then and then you're going to fatten it out and run all that out at once so this thing is this guy's a traffic cop and he's <laughs> keeping it totally bang 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 and try not to get anybody's fingers or toe smashed and now where do we go all right so that's the resaw uh real quick so he's everything gets cut down there's no cans left after it leaves the resaw. Everything's cut down to... Everything's done. This thing finished. Except for the pallet wood. You see this? This is turned to pallet. See all the... So that one, it was good, but it's the rotten rod, on that end. Rot all in it. And, uh, okay. They might be giving up too soon on this one. I don't know, but... It depends on what grade they're selling. It looks like they're giving up a bit soon on a couple of these, but... But anyways, this rot is pallet stock. And we'll get in the pallet stock here in a little bit. Let me run you back to the fall room real quick. Take a look at the fall room. Uh, before I get taken apart, because that's what we're doing most of the Ready? So now we're going into the yeah, filing room. This is the filing room. We keep everything sharp. This is where all the circle saws are done. The hot top saw, head saw. Here's your teeth to go in. That's got a carbide tip. Does the cutting. Uh, uh, I don't know where his holder's on. This is on your mama's loader, right? No, no that's this, on the head saw out there. That's on the head saw out there. So this tooth goes in, locks into the holder. Pulls it down in here with whatever this tool. So when you change teeth, you can pop your tooth out. There you are. And stick your tooth back in. I'm getting a little too winded here. <laughs> so when your teeth get so bad, you change them kind of like you do on the big mama circle saw out in the woods. Gotcha. Because it's spinning that way, that's always going to yeah, be Yeah, they stay in. Now, if they do get watered out, you can lose the tooth. Yeah. Yep. So there's that. Now, uh, the saw blade spins 640 RPM. You got to, when the saw blade is relaxed, you see these, these uh, uh, roll marks here? Roll, yep. roll, roll. So this, this saw is shaped like a bowl, like a, like a salad bowl. When you spin it up, the metal stretches. This metal is a lot more metal, got a lot more centrifugal force. It'll expand. So you're putting, basically in a nutshell, you're putting a certain amount of dish in this saw blade according to RPM and okay. saw size. And when you speed it up to speed, it'll stand up straight and be stiff. That's yeah. the idea. Makes sense. So when, when, it, when you kill it back down, it'll turn back into So Now on average, how often do you have to sharpen those or change the blades out? Sharpening, quite often. Probably once every hour 45 minutes two hours oh they're taking them off that yeah oh sharpen, but they're sharpening them on the thing okay. they ain't taking them off they're sharpening them with the so like it's not chainsaw. it's not just like yeah run, they got a target it. grinder with a drill motor that yeah 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 so as long as you're doing all your stuff right everything's good everything's fine if a piece of wood falls in there it gets it hot the body hot or something and the saw gets to walking and wobbling or you run your teeth too dull and your saw starts laying over on you yeah it's all laying over when you're pushing on the saw it's not cutting but your body's bowing doesn't let your heat so this area here is where we hammer the saw see all the hammer marks in that saw yeah when they get bowls and divots and stuff in there they get heat marks stretch marks stuff like that they beat them out with a hammer and they can check them with their guides they can hold the saw up that's what that table is for is hammer okay this table here is to put the roll in the saw you can uh you can move your saw to wherever you want your roll at and they roll it around they got a crimping roller and spin in a circle this here is for sharpening chipper knives uh, it's pretty much straightforward. There's a grinding wheel that runs back and forth. You put your chipper knives in there and get your setting right and sharpen them. Uh, now this here is where it really gets... All right, your bands are real particular, real meticulous. The thing about your bands is, is you get your speed and you get your small curve at the same time. So this is where everything has to be just freaking right. So. This rig here, when you bring a band in off, them bands have been brought in. They've, they've had the crap beat out of it. Look at the divots <laughs> in them. You see this? It's yeah. bubbles. There's bubbles in the metal. The metal's been stretched around pockets of sawdust on the wheels and stuff. And uh, they, they've been sawing ash with this. You see the ash residue on it. So uh, these are in here. They're going to have bubbles and bowls and everything else in them. And they're going to put them in this, in this, uh, in the, in the auto bench. And, and this auto bench runs around and it's got a mic that. It moves out and it's it sending information back to it and it's hammering and, and, and putting 
smashing high spots and, and, and stuff. It's flattening the saw out. Gotcha. So the saw blade's pretty much flat and got a little bit of tension left that one's done. Then it moves over to the hand bench. And this is where you really gotta be good at your stuff. And they'll bench this thing to put their tire lines in it. So basically, the wheels on a bandsaw is flat. It's not got crown like a conveyor pulley. So they, they make tight spots on these bands. So basically, your wheels run like this. And when you push against them, you can't push them back right off the wheel. That's how they stay on a wheel. So they have to put all that back in. They have to make sure it's not it's got back in it. So it's got the saw blades actually got tension pushing out. So when you push against it, it's putting up your fight where you're pushing forward. So all that stuff's got to be done. And now the body of the saw is ready. You bring it over here to the grinder. If you swedge and shape it, this is your swedger. And there's an air shaper somewhere. But anyways, what you do is there's no carbide teeth on these. It's just the body of the saw. So your swedger pulls you up a hunk of metal, and your shaper comes in and shapes it. And then now you got your big fat hunk of chunk of, of dull metal. <laughs> so you bring it through here, and this is a CNC sharpener, and it'll sharpen and put your profile in. Head broke chain. Oh, great. So that's some Friday shenanigans. <laughs> so, uh, I love the note, though. Yeah, it is a good note. So uh, that's basically how that works. And it'll CNC, and you go around, you do. You grind it and grind, and you, you, I don't know, two trips to the grinder. No, this new style grind, they might be doing two trips, but it's usually three or four. And your last one be a slow grind, a nice, slow, easy grind. And now you got a saw that's perfect. They put it in the plastic. So it's been. How, how long are those lasting before they have to change it out? Well, that's top secret. Top I can't secret. tell you. Gotcha. I can tell you all, but I'd have to kill you. Or Derek would kill me. So, sorry. I, we don't keep many secrets, but that's his secret. That's and I his got secret. Honor yeah he's told me before i'm not allowed to tell so obviously whatever y'all's imagine is probably a little better because of his craftsmanship i'm gonna say they still have to change them since they have more than one yeah it, 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 i change one every morning that's all i can say i change one every morning when i come in to help them get started in the mornings how many people plastic, run. one person normally runs this two how many stay we in got here? two guys that's trained up to do it one guy's like a papa and well two of them's a papa and then they're starting to kind of train a guy in now or two so and, and they teach me a little bit of stuff but i can't do it myself i can't run that cnc i have a hell of a time trying to run it <laughs> so now right, we're, the head saw is the head saw makes the wood square the the boards that it saws can come down this row case okay the boards the resaw saws go down that row case now, any board that's got Wayne on the sides gets kicked off either by that sweep chain or by this lift chain here, and it comes over to the edger. It's got two saws in there, there's two saw blades in here. Let me shine your camera down here. And it adjusts in or out. It's got laser lights that shine out on the board, and you adjust the board, move the saws in and out to take the proper amount of Wayne off. Now, there's a guy standing right there. Yeah, that... that's your operator for okay. the edger. A lot of our focus has been on the edger here right lately. So you got your thickness, everything, you got three dimensions, length. What length, thickness length are you height. cutting? Two inch? Did that varies. Oh, okay. It all varies. Okay. Everything's variable, except for your lengths. You sell boards by the nearest foot. So you sell boards, eights, nines, tens, elevens, twelves, thirteens, fourteens, fifteens, sixteens. And you gotta have trim at least four inches trim, we squeeze on that, but four inches trim plus an ear's foot. So this edger is doing, uh, he's setting the width on it. You gotta have at least, we're pushing for about 70% of the board right now. It depends on market, but 70% of the board now, weighing free. That's on a good grade board. So I mean, it's gotta be perfect and then it can have a little bit of weight on it for part of the length of the board. Mm, gotcha. Now you got your, Width and height done, you're gonna to have to do your length of your three dimensions. So here's your length, it's your trim saw. And it gets the opportunity to cut. So when you when you put your logs, it's shaped like this on the head saw, you know, there's gonna be boards that's got on yeah. the end of it. So he can take the So he's that. sitting right here. What are those like every two feet apart? Yep. And they're raised up, but when the board goes through there, the yep. one they drop he down. Won't, there's uh, proxy switches right here. Mm -hmm. So every one of these proxy switches, when it crosses it, it picks up a board and drops the saw. Gotcha. The last proxy switch that's closed, that drops the saw. And then all the waste 
gets funneled over here to the chipper. It's not perfect. We're not perfect at everything. We're not the best sawmill you ever see, but. So, okay, uh, the waste okay. is going yep. down below. Yep, so your edging strips and your, your basically your edging strips and your slabs. Your, yep. so the first thing comes off a slab, then the width of the board is your edging strips. Edging strips and slabs coming down this conveyor. See the shaker and table and it. The board ends get chopped off there and comes out this conveyor. Okay, so all the dumps trash it on there. And that, that's, your, that's your trash can. And you. then what is, what do we got going on here? It looks that's like that. That's a pattern order. Anybody want any cedar, call us. That's a pattern order that didn't get Do you have cut. a lot of red cedar up here? Not a lot, but we, we have a lot back on. All right, now, uh, once it goes through the double end trim, your length, width, and height is, the, everybody up here in the sawmill room has made a big stab at what they think the best length, width, and height of the board is. Okay. Okay, it comes down here, gets even ended back over here to the grading station. To the lumber room. Let me run turn on wash quick. Don't even forget this, would you? made their stab at what the best length, width, and height that they predicted should be on each board coming down here. Okay, it comes to the inspector. This is the grading section. We've got two graders. And uh, here's my thing I'm so proud of that we built in-house. Uh, these things these things jump up and flip the board. So they don't have to manually do it. So you know, yeah. And so small boards that they want to flip by hand, they can, but the ones they want, the electricity's on, but there's no air. But uh, well, that's what controls it. So he yeah. waits till he gets right there and yep. Well, he first raises two limit switches. He can raise it and it'll jump up and catch the board. Then he pushes the rest of the way down and he'll flip it and he gotcha. can let it off. So, so he, if he's got to look at something, yeah. So and that's how it. And a dealer deals on a board every so many, and then that that photo sales linked into it. I could go. I could explain that for a day. <laughs> so. But anyway, it's all look at get a look under there. You got we two people, it. two people right here grading. Yeah, and get a shot underneath there. We invented that and done all that in house. So they're grading right here. Yep. They're looking at it to see it's going to be number one, number two, mm -hmm. number three. Yeah. And if it's real bad, it's a bad number two. Oh. So anyway, <laughs> you look at the side under there. This is we done, we done them. <clears throat> we built them. Sure. Everything. That's the only one you'll see at, at this time. So we invented a son of a buck. You put a patent on it? No. <clears throat> They killed him back after World War II. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so it starts out with the, the first grades is your low grades, and we grade everything according to this chart. So you got face, uh, face one face, uh, one common, uh, 2A and B. We don't really do 2A and B. We got one common, 3A, 3B. One common, 2A, 2B. Three. One common, 2A, 3A. 3B. Yeah. 
And we the the B we yeah that's that's mushy. No, but anyways, you're, get, you're getting loaded so right now. In a nutshell, in a nutshell, if the board's eighty three and a third percent clear, it's face. Okay. If the board's sixty six and two thirds percent clear, it's a one common. And if you got a board that's face on one side, one common on the other side, it could be a one face. Uh, there's more stipulations to it. This is a pretty intense job. But uh, then then you go down to two common, which is fifty percent clear. Three common, which is 33 and a third percent clear. And then three B, which is 25. But th it's not as straightforward as that. They gotta meet a certain cutting requirement. They gotta meet all kinds of requirements. But in a nutshell, that's what they're looking that's for. That's summing it up. Okay, so it starts out, the first boards that get pulled off is the lower grade boards. It's okay. all separated by, <clears throat> so this is six, sevens and eights go together. Yep. What is this, a three common? That's three common and two common. So what makes that so one a three common? That's a two common right that's here. That's a two common. It's a two common. Okay. So uh, what they called that a two common from, I'm assuming is the amount of mineral in this board. They wanted to knock it down mm. to two common. I don't know why it ain't one common. And they must be, they must be calling some of them defects there uh, rot. Cause okay. your mineral's the beginning of rot. Okay. So they must be predicting that as being rot. Uh, now, uh, if they just kind of slash on it, it's three common, but we're not doing three common in poplar right now. That's why the cans we seen on the resaw was still had some three common on them. Gotcha. So here's your two common, eight, uh, six, sevens, and eights, uh, nines and tens, elevens and twelves, thirteens and fourteens, fifteens and sixteens. Okay? And you look how crappy and how naughty they are. Yep. Okay, naughty. <laughs> okay, so then, then you got your one common, which is your 66 and two thirds percent clear. Most of your lumber gets into, most of our lumber goes into, the high chunk of our lumber is one common. So, and you see it looks a little better. Oh don't yeah. They? they look a lot better. So that's your six, seven and eights, eights and tens, 13s, uh, 11s and 12s, 13s and 14s, look how wide it's on board. I mean, that's a, that's an 18 inch board there, isn't it? And 15s and 16s, yeah. Okay. And then more automatic board flippers really come in handy on them. Hey. And then here's your call. Now, stuff that can't make two common in poplar or three common in other species gets kicked out from coal. And we'll go to power room in a minute. But here's your call. This is called because it was missed sawn. It was missed. It wasn't milled properly. It, it fell below one inch on this side. I don't know if I tell when I picked it up. This yep. side's fine, but that side's below one inch. So one, any board that's, that's below one inch in thickness is a cult, period. Gotcha. It could be the nicest board. Look how mm. that board would have been. Pretty board. It would have been a one face. But it, it got a little but thin yeah. on one end. So there you go. And here's your face and one face. So your, your circles is face. Your circles with the slash is one face. And they mark them on the end for the end tally. See how it's got a mark? Yeah. So this is your highest grade. So this is pretty much sold as 83 and a third percent clear. Now look how good they look. There's six, seven, or there's only eights in face. Okay. Eights are shortest face boards. Eights, you get. tens, and twelve. Eights, nines, and tens, elevens, and twelves, thirteens, and fourteens, fifteens, and sixteens. And this is our homemade lumber bunks. They work slicker than That's a That's a beautiful board right there. Yep. Sure. And that's saying when you get done, flip that up, yank that handle, gate opens, and it's gone. And come, it works slick, and that took a lot of work on my part. Come get on it on the part. Excuse me. Our come part. get it on the forklift, right? Yep. And then it rolls them little rollers out like it did. Because before rolls. you had to push everything out by hand, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. And we still do on them carts. Yeah. But we're converting them over slowly over time. All right. Now over here, this is this. He, he's sawing this up for some for some uh, cribbing. For some cribbing. And then this here is a uh, is a uh, well, it's another cart. They must have an overrun cart. Of 16s. I don't know what this all about, but it's there. And then the ones that they don't catch in time come yeah, right here? Come off there and they can cycle them back around. And that's now, when inspectors, you see all the board ends and stuff over there? So inspectors might take another stab at width, length, and height to trim on things, to upgrade things. It's a long story. But all their scrap goes in the, after they chop, nip, nip, and tuck things off of boards. So is there somebody, a dedicated person right here to? Depends. Sometimes, sometimes not, yeah. It's all, it's all relative to ba basing on your species, 
and all that stuff. Because some species you, you upgrade the heck out of, like poplar, you yeah. upgrade her out. But you get to something mm -hmm. like uh, hickory, not much. You know, smaller species, not much. Shorter wood, not much, because there's not much room to upgrade. Yeah. You can't chop much off of a board to turn it into, a, you know, a princess. Oh. <laughs> so anyway, so we got our palace. Though. This is yeah. this is like two and a half inch thick stuff. Yeah. So when you get to the heart, when you get to the pit, see the pith right here. Okay. See the center of the heart right there. Uh huh. Pith, pith, right pith shaker Wayne. Pith, pith. And, and, and knots and everything. When you get down to grade so bad, it's not going to make nothing, but it's solid. It can make crating. Then it comes down here. And this here, so we got to do our dimensions again. Uh, we start with our width through this, uh, through the, through the Marine Johnson. Um, and there's saws. Every laser lot here has got a saw. Okay. So it's a game rip. So they can move this. It's kind of primitive, but it, it works for us for now. But they bring the boards and move them to maximize the width of the boards and send them through. So the call lumber and the hearts, them's the hearts. The call lumber and the hearts get sent in here to run through here to process them and make pallet, make grain out of it. So then once the widths are made, then we go for length. Now, when you stop a board to chop the board, that's where you're slowing down the room. All right, so hold on. This is coming out of here. Go into this green chain. How does it get to this table? Okay, so we're pulling it back across. This oh, there's somebody here pulling it across. Yep. Gotcha. And he's inspecting and he's marking defects with the, or with the, you know. Yeah. Mark. Now, there's a little camera, that, that chop saw, that's a, that's an optimizing chop saw. So it's, it's got a computer in it and it's, and it, it can sense through photo cells. It can sense the front of the board. It can sense the back of the board. Uh, from photo cells. And then it's also got an encoder that spins all the time with a belt. So the computer wants to see the front of the board, it's counting encoder, it knows the length of the board. And then with this crayon, in, 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 in the reader up there, it can read what he says is a defect. So then the computer knows the defect. It's also got a width scanner, so the computer knows the width. Because on pallet, if y'all ever notice in pallets, you got different widths of boards on your yeah. pallets. So we rip different widths. Three and three quarters, and uh, five and three quarters. So it, it's, it's 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 predicting the width, and that changes its cut bill. So this all the time it's going through this. There's stuff going across the screen where this computer's trying to maximize the yield. It's trying to maximize the yield in the allowable part of the board that it's going to cut uh, pallet stock out. Of. So I'm going over here. It's, and sorry to place the mess. We didn't clean it up, uh, Friday. It's still a very clean sawmill, I think. So. Uh, now you got the uh, now you got the length, you got the width, you got the length. Now it's time for the height, and these are band wood miser band saws, and you got four head, four head, and three head, and they're all set at different cut bills. So you got one, two, and three. So when you're cutting five eighths thick stuff, there's that, and when you're cutting inch and an eighth thick, which that's going to be the part that stands up on your pallet. And then here's the deck board, half inch or five eighths, depending on how heavy a stuff that they're gonna put on their pallet. So they, the people that nails pallets are making orders from us what they want cut out. So and that's what basically what we're doing. And uh, so now, just like the sawmill, the operators has made their stab at the best options of length, width, and height. And they send it down to the inspection station, which is just like the sawmill does. So, one of the same guys that grades over there then stands here and he's inspecting. And he's picking out bads and goods and sorting and, and anything that needs upgraded goes on that chain right there. That's their, where the upgrades go and then they can chop and, you know, the boards, if you notice, they start out as great big logs and now we're getting a little bit. We're getting pieces. smaller and smaller. I mean, we're pilot decking right here. Yep. Getting all the way down to this. And you can use all, all the wood. Yep, doesn't, everything. Doesn't matter. So here's your smallest pieces, and there's your stringers. Okay. So they'll run you here about a notcher in a pallet shop. So then we'll go and then we'll get piled in the notcher, and they get the notch where your fork truck can come in at an odd angle. And here's all your different deck boards, them different deck board dimensions. And they're over here, and over here, different deck boards. There's a 40, 
every pallet, and the 90% of the pallets in the world is a 40. So here's your 40, here's your 440s, and here's your 640s. So 90% of your pallets. That right there. See the 440s and 640s. That's and, some, then, and then stringers. I'm not gonna lie, that's a pretty nice pallet. There you go. See, the best. So anyways, and, that, and that's that. And it gets all the way down to here's your cleanup size. Here's your tap size. That's how short of a board you can get down to and still sell something out of it. Before it goes into the chipper. Because mm -hmm. right. anything that goes in the chipper is it's wasted money. It's going to be colored mulch. <laughs> Everything here gets used. <clears throat> Nothing goes over the hill that's on it. It all gets used. Even the stuff swept up off the floor, it's animal bedding. Oh, is that what you use the sawdust for? Yep. So you're constantly, and then just like a sawmill, Here's your, here's your, where all your, this is going to the trash can. So there's your vibrating table that feeds this. There's a really strong magnet here. A really strong magnet. Just in case any, uh. Yes, hammers. We picked up hammers, big hammers. Stuff that doesn't need to go through yep. that. Chipper. Yep. And this, so now we got down to the waist. This is where it gets a little simpler. So this thing chops it all up into hogans. It's a hog. And then everything, so. The waste from the sawmill. So it's blowing it through this suction. Suction. This vacuum cleaner up there. Okay. The vacuum cleaner. So all the chips gets resized through that hog. It's a vertical hog over here. It's a chipper, and then it gets dumped out right here in this chain. So here's your chips, finished chips. That's what the sawmill stuff looks like. And here's the finished stuff from the pallet room. That's from this system down here. Okay. Sawmill residue, pallet stock residue. So you almost like a shredded yep. mulch. And then you have like your designer and mulch. And then uh, it all gets mixed. When it gets up that auger, it gets mixed. And then when we haul it over bare hollow and dump it out, it gets mixed. So all of it gets mixed together. To make the base material for our collared mulch and then we collar it and it's all virgin wood all our mulch is virgin wood and we sell in virgin wood colored mulch gotcha so everything here gets and then all the sawdust goes to the back of the building for animal bedding so none of this stuff goes to waste so all the waste on the other end gets turned into colored mulch all the waste that goes this direction goes for animal bedding So, we call these the basements. So if you look down here, this is the basement. Oh, wow. And this is the basement out of the- It really side. is, it goes up under here, doesn't it? And, and, and we got a little issue with drains right now. Self-inflicted from the belt. The belt brings water Double in. Brain. Yeah, so we gotta deal with that here soon. We can probably drill some holes but in But I just changed, I just changed this belt last year. Change, change this year, this summer change it go differently than it used to so anyways here's your sawdust conveyor it's bringing sawdust out of the resaw and that's it and no sawdust out of the resaw edger the whole sawmill the yeah sawdust out of the whole sawmill comes out right there okay over here is the bark now this gets sold for landscape the bark does okay it that, gets ground for landscape so you bark. got you got one thing for the debarker it comes to right here yep See the bark hanging off the end? Yep. Some go easy, some goes hard, but they all eventually go. That one He's put up a on. struggle. He's fighting for life. <laughs> so what is all this contraption? Keep dust down? That, that's the dust That's the dust drawn from... So the dust drops on the auger from the sawmill here. The dust sucked from the pallet room, like all them saws in the pallet room, gets sucked through that big vacuum cleaner. Okay. And that vacuum cleaner system, that's your, that's your vacuum bag, basically. And gotcha. It's like, I got some things conglomerated. It's a work uh, but in progress. That's, a, that, that, that's quite the tower. Yeah, it's a work in progress, though, as far as the clutter and stuff. And, and the open, auger, what is that? So you can move it? And the open electrical panel. And uh, so that's a, that's the stuff I see. Yeah. Now, I have a belt guard. I don't know why it ain't on there. It's sitting up there on the catwalk. Somebody pulled it off the other day. So, but that's the things I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> All the unfinished stuff. <clears throat> you can fix that Monday morning. Yeah. Along with probably many other things. <laughs> probably like the note on the uh, 
sharpener yeah, in there. Yeah, the sharpener chain thing. Uh, so in here is the basement <clears throat> for the debarker. And then they can sweep the floor and drop their, their this goes up to the floor where they're sweeping the floor. Oh, cool. And this here is the, uh, the basement for the uh, log turner. Okay. So we gotta keep that cleaned out down there. We got some build up there that we didn't get cleaned out good enough. And we changed that log turner out a couple years ago and, I, and there, there's my hose crimps there. They've been nice and pretty good. <laughs> and uh, if you look up here real quick, you can see. That makes such good sense to have all your clean out chutes dumped right out here on your belt. Yeah. And you can just. Yep. And then here you can see up in the debarker. <clears throat> yep. And that's where your debarker stuff goes. So this is pretty violent right here then. Coming ah, in. Not really. It kind of rains like. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah, it can't be too bad. It'd be all over the floor in here, wouldn't it? Just kind of rains down. And that's your. So your bark gets ground up and sold for bark mulch. Your sawdust gets sold for animal bedding. And all the rest of the stuff gets chopped up and sold for colored mulch or playground mulch. Uh -huh. We're a certified playground mulch dealer too. Certification sucks, but we're certified certified playground mulch people. <clears throat> I'll now get the light. Playground mulch to schools and stuff like that too. Now we have two screw compressors in this sawmill. Two seventy-five horse screw compressors on each end of the operation, and this is a Quincy down here. It's a seventy-five horse Quincy from nineteen. Don't say. 1998. Uh -huh. And uh, on the other end is a, uh, is a, uh, is a, uh, Air. 75 horse Sullivan Air on the other end. They're both screw compressors and they got a drawing, they got a desiccant drawing system. Our air is everything to us. Because all the little things that happen in the middle comes from this air compressor. Everything comes from right so here. So it's got two towers and one tower taking out moisture for 20, 20 seconds. And then while the other, other tower is purging. So the air pressure builds up in one tower. You got air pilot gate valves that, uh, that locks one tire out, then opens one tire up to drain. So you're constantly either draining or filling, charging all day long, every 20 seconds. Gotcha. And it, and it, through, and it, and it, and it separates the water out of the air system. And y'all... And here's this, the shotgun this... we put in on our carriage. Here's our shotgun feedworks. It's a Tyrone Berry 285, I believe, uh, feedworks. And that's what runs our carriage. Look at the oil pipes. Look at the hoses, hydraulic hoses. The oil runs through. Oh my. These are 5,000 pound hoses, I believe. You don't have any of those on the truck, do you? No, I don't have them in Whitey. 4,000 pound PSI at three inch, two inch. That's two. Two? Yeah. 4,300, two. Yeah. So it's a two inch, 4,000 pound hose. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's wow. six of them hoses. And they're a bear. And that shotgun, man, it'll punch that carriage back and forth, just lickety split. So y'all pretty much built this from scratch, this mill. Or was there an already? Well, yeah, yeah, we put it in. Big Daddy put it in. Now, I've been modifying it for You've years. just been upgrading it. Yeah. More modernized. Yeah. Changing things. This was bought at an auction down the land between the lakes. Uh, there was an auction down the land between the lakes. We bought this thing, old use, put it in, uh, you know. Every modification you do, you kind of put a lot of sweat equity in it. You don't really. Well, you learn. I mean, it takes time to. You... Give me the money. <laughs> give me the money. Give me the money. Oh, all the money sitting out there. Let you... me sign the dotted line, please. <laughs> Everybody's like, you got a lot of money sitting out there. Uh, that's yeah. not worth anything until it gets cut into a finished no. product, isn't it? No. Well, Wade, I greatly appreciate the. What do y'all uh, think? I hope y'all liked it. I hope y'all enjoyed. Uh, Loggerwade.com. <laughs> <laughs> See, I had to come all the way up here because this is the video I've been wanting. Well, awesome. you, you never would do it from start to finish on how it goes yeah. from log to lumber. Yeah. And we just created that. So Sweet. Thank you for taking the time to do that. So people will watch it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? It was dark when you picked me up and it's going to be dark when we get home. That's so my day every day. Let's roll. Oh, let's roll. And here we have pretty much what they've cut. That whole lot was empty uh, when Wade and I did the tour. So they have cut all that before lunch this morning. I have no idea how many board feed that is, but it's more than a couple. That's a fair amount. 
I don't know if any's gone out, but I don't think they like to keep it laying on the yard very long, do they? Nope, they don't stick around. Pretty impressive seeing this thing run. There's the uh, mulch coming off the conveyor there. Like how it comes out of one's like a looks like a triple shred mulch and the other one's chips and they just yeah, to get mix it, it together. Yeah. They said they just mix it together and it all yeah, makes one. Yeah. 